the art of war that was translated from Chinese. The first thing that I ever learned verbatim out of it was, uh, just as water retains no constant shape, so too in war are there no constant conditions. He who can best adjust his tactics relative to the opponent may be known as a heaven-born captain. Get back, White! Get back, White! Bobby Knight is heaven-born to some, hell-bent to others. A fiercely controversial man who has fallen victim to almost every adjective except dull. But if there is one quality that illuminates the personal side of Bobby Knight, the side away from the basketball court, it is not his love of needling, which he aims even at his wife, Nancy. Oh, dear. I get up, fix breakfast for myself, the kids, get the kids off to school. What kids? Uh, the neighbor kids? Wash the dishes, uh, prepare lunch for Nancy, leave it under a little glass with a nice little love note on the glass, so when she gets up oh. about 11.30, she has lunch. Nor is it his bursts of temper that oh. punctuate even a friendly game of tennis. Nor is it his hunger for perfection that drives him to hit golf ball after golf ball after golf ball, oh. not quite perfectly. No, it is, strangely, something more peaceful, more reflective. It is, even more strangely, for a man who is so often at war with the press, his great love for the written word. I think the two greatest um, forms of relaxation for me are fishing and reading. He grew up fishing and reading in a small Ohio town, the son of a school teacher and a railroad man. The library used to run reading contests and how many books could you read in a month or whatever the period would be and then they'd start a new contest. And uh, I would always be uh, uh, behind a few girls, but I'd be the first boy in town in terms of books read. Knight hates to lose, probably especially to girls, and he admires winners, but not at all costs. He loves to read about his favorite general, and it isn't Patton. We all study history, and Grant kind of comes off as this sort of bumbling, uh, alcoholic kind of a, a general that, that won because of sheer numbers and over... Well, nothing could be further from the truth. So even guys that wrote then didn't know a hell of a lot about what they were writing about. That just isn't a modern-day phenomenon. Now, you get the hell back to your sports desk, and you tell them to clear something with me before you come in here and do anything. Okay. Knight does not have scorn for all writers. He even has a favorite sports writer, John Updike, writing about Ted Williams' final baseball game in The New Yorker. He's writing about how Carol Hardy took Williams' place and afforded Williams one last chance to tip his cap. And uh, Williams goes into the dugout, and Updike says not to return and not and then the way he ends that part of the story is after all gods don't answer letters knight himself was an ohio state basketball player and of course he came to know and admire the ohio state football coach woody hayes whose brilliant career ended in a burst of temper a punch thrown at an opposing player you ever had any fear that you would lose control well of the i don't think that you can ever say yes or no and I honestly think when that happened with him, he should just quit right then. Because he really, he, he did lose at that. And, and uh, uh, I've always said to myself that if I got to that point, I would just quit. But uh, I may get really upset because I think I'm legitimately upset with either a poor play or a poor call or whatever it might be. But if I go beyond being legitimately upset because of the preparation that we've put into it, then I got to get out of it because it isn't worth it to anybody then. There is your